Hi everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In the last video, we set up our retrofit client and now in this video, we will create the repository. As we are following the MVVM pattern, so in MVVM, we create repository that communicates with either our backend API or our local storage. So in this video, we will create the repository. But before creating the repository, First, we will create the data classes that will map our login response. So here I have postman and this is the response that we will get when we have a successful login. So what I will do is I will copy the response and I will use the plugin to generate the response classes. And to store the responses, I will create one more package so let's create a package responses and inside this package i will go to new and i will select this kotlin data class file from json if you want to know about this plugin then again you can click on this card and you can watch the video about this plugin so i will select this option and i will paste the response and i will name my class as login response and then I will generate the response class. So as you can see, we have generated the response class successfully. I have the data class user and I have the data class login response. Now I will go to my auth API and I will change the return type to login response like this. And one more thing I will do here is that I forget in the last video, we need to make this function suspend because we are going to use coroutines for our asynchronous calls. So that is why we need to make this function suspend because we need to call it asynchronously. So everything is done. Now we can create the repository and to create the repository again, we will create one more package. So I will create a package and I will name it repository and inside this package, I will create a Kotlin file and I will name it base repository and it will be the base repository for all our repository classes. So I will create an abstract class base repository because I won't be creating the instance of this base repository class directly, but I will inherit this class to my actual concrete repository classes. So this is my base repository class and inside this class, I will define a function and this function is for safely call the API. So I will create a function named safe API call and it is again a suspending function. So I have a suspend fun and it is a generic type of function so i am defining the type as t now i will name the function as safe api call like this and this function will return us a resource of type t now this resource here is our sealed class that we created in the last video to wrap our success and failure responses so i will import the class and this suspend function safe API call will return us a resource of type T where T is the actual response that we should get. Now we have this function that will execute the API call and to this function we will pass a parameter that is our API call. So it is another suspending function. So for the parameter of the safe API call, I will define API call. It is the parameter and it is a suspending function. And that is why I need to define the suspend keyword here. So we have suspend and now this function will return us T. So we have the API call that is another suspending function as a parameter of our safe API call function. Now inside the safe API call function, we will execute this API call. 
so what we will do is we will return we will write return and then we will use the function with context because i want to execute all the api calls in io dispatcher so here i will write dispatchers dot io now inside with context first i will try executing my api call and to do this i will write api call dot invoke now if it is successful if this call was successful we will get the result directly and we will put the result to our resource sealed class that we already created so what i will do is i will wrap it here like this resource dot success and we will put the result of our api call now inside the catch block we will handle the exception so here we have throwable as throwable now inside the catch block we will handle the failure so let's come inside the catch block and here i will check when throwable now if the throwable is an http exception so we will check is http exception and in this case i will send resource dot failure and i will make the network error as true and error code i will get from the throwable instance so here i will write throwable and then code and then for the error body again i will use the throwable instance and here i will write throwable dot response dot error body like this now any other case i will consider it as a network error so here i will write resource dot failure and this time network error is true oops i have written the network error true here as well so in case of an http exception i have the network error as false and in case of any other exception network error as true now for the other two parameters i will pass null here and we are done and we are getting some error here and i think we have something wrong in our sealed class so let's check and the problem is i forget to extend a resource and for the failure it will return us nothing like this and i need to add parenthesis now come to base repository and here you can see the error is gone so we have our base repository ready that will execute the api calls now what i will do is i will create one more repository and this time i will create auth repository for our login and sign up api calls so we have auth repository and here i will create auth repository like this and to the class auth repository i will extend base repository actually for all our repositories that we will create we need to extend this base repository now for the auth repository i will pass a parameter that is private val api and i will use auth api here like this now inside the auth repository first i will create a function that will hit our login api so let's create a function here we have fun login now this function will take email that is a string and password that is also a string and this function will call the function safe api call and inside the safe api call we will write api dot login and we will pass the email and the password like this and because our safe api call is a suspending function we need to define our login function as suspending as well and now the error is gone and we have our login function in our auth repository and in the next video we will use this repository to make our user login to our application 
so that is all for this video friends i hope you found this video helpful and learned something new if you want my source code then you can get it from the link that is given in the description of this video and finally if you like this video then please hit on that like button subscribe to my channel and share this video with all your friends and i will see you in the next video bye bye